Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you as always for being here. I appreciate you so much. You have got to see what I have created with Dollar Tree decals. Let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, this is a form from um, Chalk Couture that I've had in my stash for a while, but you could use any kind of piece of wood. And I've got my Dollar Tree uh, decal here. This is a wall decal. It is removable. And this is going to be like a 30 second DIY, you guys. It is so simple, but I love it so much. The hardest part about this was getting the decal aligned and centered because as it was split on the Dollar Tree um, backing, if you will, it was not um, cut directly in half, at least from the way that I could tell because that little knobby at the top was not split down the middle. So the hardest part for me was just making sure that I had it um, centered and then all lined up and put together. And that was it. And I kept looking at it thinking I needed to do something more to it. And let me know if you would have added something, but I just ended up loving the simplicity of this. So I decided I'm going to leave it just like this. And then if I want to use the form for something else later, I can pull the decal off and use some paint or something. DIY number two. All right, this is a piece of pallet wood that was cut down. It's been sitting in my garage for a while. I liked this particular piece because it was kind of curved on the edges. It's like they took the log of the tree and this might have been towards the, the edge of the log where it was it had that curvature to it. Um, and I wanted to use that to my advantage because it happened to be top and bottom and it looked like it was meant to be that way. But it was a little rough, so I am taking my sanding block to it. Um, I'm actually, I've wrapped another cleaner piece or newer piece of sandpaper around the block because my block is getting a little run down um, and just used the block to help support that sandpaper. So once I had that sanded down, so I wasn't going to give myself all kinds of splinters, I went ahead and cleaned up my little work surface. I love that little mini vacuum from Amazon. It is awesome. It works really well. But got that cleaned up and now I'm ready to go. I'm just going to take my Adirondack chalk paint and give this a really rough paint job. It is not going to be full coverage. I wanted just enough to provide a backing for my Dollar Tree decal because they are black words on a clear backing and I thought it might get a little too lost um, on the wood tone so I wanted to have this white in the background but I didn't want it to be solid white. I love the wood. I love that it's textured and rustic looking so I wanted to kind of keep that part of it intact. So doing a dry brush along most of it, obviously I applied a little extra paint in the center, but um, really rough, as I mentioned. Once I had that done, I'm going to go ahead and put my paint away, and I wanted it to be relatively dry, but at the same time I figured, you know what, if it was a little bit damp, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing, and I do later on use the decals on wet paint, and you'll see what I mean. But for this one, I did go ahead and dry it for most of the way. And then I was ready to apply my decal. The biggest thing again for me was trying to get it centered, trying to get my words spaced properly because these decals come in little bits and pieces. And so I just took one piece at a time, took my time, and I, I didn't press it down right away. I wanted to make sure that I could see you guys have heard me say time and time again, I'm very visual. I like to see things in place before I commit fully. So I was trying to just very lightly place these on here and um, so I could kind of figure out where they needed to be. 
adjusted it as needed. Take another look, kind of eyeballing it. Now, while these appeared to be the same distance from the start of the letter to the edge, and even looking at it here, they do appear that way as well. Um, I didn't measure it with my ruler, so they may very well have been, but because I guess that B at the very beginning has a long tail on it, it made it look eventually like it was not um, as far enough over to the left as it needed to be. And you're gonna see what I mean in just a minute. But I went ahead and started applying these other um, little, um, I don't even know what to call them. And they're leaves, right? But maybe like a fern kind of thing. I don't know. Whatever you want to call these, I was applying them. But as you can see, there seems to be a lot more space on the left side than there is on the right. So now I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to move this closer to the B. And I'm going to see about applying that third um, wispy decal, leafy decal. And at first I wasn't crazy about it. So you're going to also see me take it away again and set it aside. Um, I don't know. There was just something about it. I, I, I didn't, wasn't crazy about it. I do end up coming back to it though. So for right now, I'm just kind of looking at it, trying to decide what I want to do, set it aside. And I'm going to go ahead and at least secure all of these pieces down. So I first use my fingers and then I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper and my burnishing tool to help rub them down. You'll see that right here. And if you don't have a burnishing tool, you can certainly use something like a credit card or anything like that that has kind of an edge on it that will help you kind of rub this down. You could use a coin, right? Anything that's going to... Um, have that edge on it that's strong enough that you can rub it against the piece and um, and have it just help flatten everything and seal it onto your project. So I got that done and I'm looking at it and now it looks completely off-centered because I've got that big gap over on the left. So I am going to grab my third little decal and apply it there and I just overlapped it a little bit with the first one so you can see a couple of the leaves are kind of touching there and I actually did like that after I took a second gander at it so I'm gonna go ahead and get that applied securely and I'm ready to put a hanger on the back of it I am loving this I think it is so pretty it's rustic but elegant I don't know there's something about it I'm amazed that these are Dollar Tree decals that we're creating these with I just am in love with these so much so this is a piece of scrap wire that I've had in my stash it was actually trash it was something that um, had been holding a piece of um, I think it was chicken wire or something together that I had purchased and I didn't want to throw it away I figured I could use it so I salvaged it and it's been in my stash I've been using it bit by bit and creating my little hanger here. So I'm using my staple gun and just securing it and then folding it over itself and then twisting it around as you could see. And I did that on both sides. And then I just made sure that I po uh, tucked the ends under and aimed them kind of towards the back of the wood so that they wouldn't stick out and be pokey. And that is gonna be it for this. It's gonna hang it nice and securely, but let me know what you think of this one. DIY number three. All right, another D um, Dollar Tree decal. And this is a piece of um, MDF that I had in my garage. It was a larger piece that Rich cut down for me. Um, I have some of my chalk paint here. That's provincial blue, my Adirondack um, white chalk paint. I'm also gonna be using elephant and black. And those are the four colors I'm gonna be using for this. Now, I have never done anything like this 
I do not consider myself an artist, um, or at least not a very good one. Um, I am not trained in painting by any stretch of the imagination. So I actually looked, I had this vision in my mind. So the decal said, um, faith can move mountains, right? And so I had this image in my mind of misty mountains and having this decal over the mountains. So what did I do? I looked on YouTube for a how-to video <laughs> and I found one that I thought I might be able to um, to emulate or at least learn from. Um, and so I'm going to link that video in my description box because I'm sure that gentleman will be able to explain it much better than I would be able to. Um, but I, you know what? I am super proud of how this project turned out. So I hope that you'll stick with me as I go through this one. It is definitely a little bit more complicated than the rest of the projects in this video. This definitely took me more time. I would say all in, it took me a couple of hours to do this. Um, I trusted the process and I continue to apply my paint. You're going to see that when I start out here, this is super blue. I did end up going in and putting at least one other layer. I'm trying to remember now, but um, I just continued to layer my paint until I had it looking the way that I wanted it to. And the gentleman in the video that I'm linking in the description box, he shared that you are gonna spend a lot more time on your background um, than on the details. He said that the, the details are really the last maybe 15% of your time on the project. Now, something that he had done, he used a canvas. I am clearly not using a canvas. I'm using um, this board. And uh, he also had kind of outlined with pencil the mountain scene that he had in mind. I didn't bother to do that. I just figured I would wing it. Um, I don't know why I decided to wing it, but I just had this image in my head and I felt like it was strong enough that I didn't need to outline it on the, the form for myself. But um, I would encourage you if you feel like you want to have that kind of drawn out or sketched out, you're gonna end up painting over it anyway. So if you like having that visual, absolutely go for it and, um, and sketch it out just slightly um, to give yourself an idea of the form that you're trying to create. So as I do this, you can see I'm already starting to come over it with um, a lighter shade of blue, but I am outlining the background shape that I am envisioning for my mountains. And I'm just going to sit back and let you watch what I'm doing here for a little bit, and then I'll comment as we go here and there. As you can see, I am just trying to create these clouds that are going through. I was at first envisioning them just going through the middle of the range of the mountains with the mountains visible at the bottom of the picture as well. Uh, and then I ended up deciding that I wasn't going to do that. So I am, you're gonna see me filling that whole bottom area in a little bit later with the mist that I have envisioned, 
but right now I am still trying to get my my clouds and my background up at the top to the color and um, depth that I'm looking for. So again, it's uh, a matter of trusting the process and testing different colors. I have to admit I used a lot more gray in these colors than I would have thought was going to happen. I thought that the gray would muddy it too much, but it honestly didn't. I was pleasantly surprised um, at what the gray did for the picture. And uh, this was a really neat thing to, to experiment with. And I really enjoyed the, this process. So hopefully you're enjoying watching it. So here I am just coming in with some of my white, as you can see, and a little bit of the gray, and just trying to give a little bit more body, I suppose, to these clouds or this mist um, that the mountains are, are poking up through. Adding in some clouds in my sky. My sky is finally the color that I was aiming for. It's not that deep, deep blue that I had before, the brighter blue. It's a more natural shade in my opinion now. I've got my wispy clouds up in the skies and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of that mist along the bottom. Now, as you can see, that shade is a little bit more gray than what I had going through the center. So I'm just gonna continue to work it and um, layer my paint until I get it all looking the way that it really should look.
Now I was using a rounded brush for all of that and now I'm switching to a flat, um, a straight edged brush. I don't know if I'm using the proper terminology, so forgive me if you are a painter and <laughs> and I am messing up the names of the paint brushes, but um, this is just a, it's straight across type of paintbrush, flat paintbrush, and I am outlining with a lighter gray um, the edges of my mountains that are going to be the furthest in the distance as far as my, my picture is concerned. So this is the elephant mixed with some white to get my lightest gray and I'm essentially going to be using three tones of gray. The lightest is for my mountains off in the distance. Then I'll be using a deeper gray, so really just going to be adding some more of the elephant to the color that I was that I'm using right now. That'll be my mid distance and then the darkest um, shade of gray will be used on the mountains that are closest. And I was honestly amazed at how this worked and the perspective that it provided. Again, I am not a painter. <laughs> um, this I'm sure to um, a successful artist will look like a very amateurish um, type piece, but I feel like I learned from this experience and I, again, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've done um, for not being someone who does a lot of um, of art per se. I do a lot of crafting, but not so much what I would consider fine art. So as you can see, I am using my medium tone gray here. I've um, actually switched fully over to the elephant. So the light gray is elephant mixed with white. And now I'm just using the elephant tone on its own. And then my darker color that I'll be using shortly um, is the elephant mixed with some black. I'm not going to use any black full out um, by itself. It, uh, this is all going to be shades of, of gray, shades of gray, shades of blue. And, and that's really it. We have a little bit of the stark white and I will be using white on its own to provide highlights in a little bit. Um, but no black on its own. So I'm going to let you watch a little bit longer here without my commentary.
So as you can see here, um, some of my paint was still a little bit too wet. I definitely recommend that you are more patient than I was while doing this. Um, here I am uh, helping it along with uh, with drying it with my heat gun. I did dry it quite a bit more than what I just showed you there, but um, and sorry for the chains rattling in the background. Sam Dog is here uh, hanging out with me. But um, I made sure that it was dry enough so that I could come back in and start layering the paint and um, going back into the background there a little bit with some more of that gray. And then I'm going to be fixing up the bottom part there along the edge of my mountains. I definitely encourage you to check out the video that um, I referenced that is in my description box. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of the channel, but as I do this voiceover, it's just not coming to me, but he was fantastic. I really appreciated the tutorial. You might see me poking at my phone um, every once in a while as I'm doing this, and it's um, because I'm re playing the video. I must have watched it or at least had it playing for me to reference at least 15 times over and over again. I think the video itself was only maybe a 12 to 14 minute video. And if I played it once, I played it 15 times. <laughs> so Now, as you saw, I just applied some mist across the front of that mountain. If I had to do it over again, I would have waited until I did all of my highlights on the mountains before I came in with that. Um, reason being that I can now not put highlights underneath the mist because the mist is supposed to be more in the foreground and the highlights are going to be directly on the mountain. So um, that was something that I realized when I got to that point that darn I should have waited to apply that mist until I had my highlights all all applied but I did have some mist there in that background um, in between the mountains so I just wanted to kind of clean up my lines because I did get it um, kind of in front of the mountains where I did not want it so just cleaning that up and then I'll be moving on to doing my highlights which uh, I thought were very, very cool. They make all the difference, just making sure everything's dry enough first. But I'm using a smaller flat-headed brush here. And if I am completely honest, I found this to be the most difficult part. Um, I was not feeling as successful in applying this um, as I would have liked. I tried to follow the instructions of the gentleman in the tutorial, but I just felt like I, I was depositing too much paint. Um, so I ultimately ended up using more of a dry brush method. I would get some paint on my brush and then wipe most of it off and then come in to try to do my highlights. And that seemed to work a little bit better for me, but um, I definitely think that this is something I would need to learn more and practice more to be more successful with it. But here's where I was wishing that I hadn't already applied that mist because I would have really liked to have had those highlights underneath the mist. Um, but I'm going to continue to apply all of the highlights, not just on the mountains in the foreground, but including all the mountains in the background as well. Um, and I think it just really brings them to life. And I'm going to let you watch without my commentary for a bit more.
hope you'll leave a comment and let me know what you think of this. I, again, I, I'm so excited for how this is turning out. So now I am ready to apply my decal. This one is a little bit shinier, so I was trying to figure out how I was gonna knock that down a little bit, that, that shine, um, because the chalk paint that I've used for this painting is um, all matte finished, and now I've got this shiny decal that I'm putting on here. This one was also a lot stickier, so I was trying to make sure that I had it pretty well lined up and uh, measured it out with my ruler seemed fine so I went ahead and pressed that down and then to knock out the shine I do have um, oh and I'm gonna go ahead and, and rub it down like I did the the other before but I was thinking you know what I have my Waverly wax in clear that I could put over this and buff it all up. So here's my Waverly Wax, and I figured at least it should even out the tone of the entire painting. So that was what I did. You do wanna make sure that your paint is all dry because if you start rubbing this onto wet paint, it's just going to move all your paint, right? So I did make sure that my paint was dry. And then I went ahead and started applying my wax. I'm just using a paper towel for this. Um, I could have painted it on and then wiped it off, but I figured why not just go for it and apply it with my little um, paper towel, or you could use a soft rag. And I just kept checking my paper towel here and there to make sure that I wasn't taking up any of the paint in the process. The only place I noticed a little bit of paint residue was when I went over the, the darkest colored mountains um, up on the left where I don't really have any highlighting um, that I saw some of the, the dark gray did come away. But you can see me just testing it and making sure that the, the paint is dry again before I go back over it. But uh, this was the last step for this. I was trying and I'm actually still trying to decide if I should frame it and if I frame it how to frame it so the piece currently is unframed I don't have any sort of a hanger on it um, but I do intend to keep this piece I'm super proud of it and so if you have any suggestions on um, whether I should frame it and if so how I should frame it I would love to to hear your thoughts or comments in uh, in the comments but definitely let me know what you think of this piece. Now it's time for a shout out timeout. Awesome Tammy, she made these for her sweet family. I think they are wonderful. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. Okay, for this project, we are going to be using a canvas and we've got my Dollar Tree wall decal there. Um, I'm gonna start out with my um, Amsterdam paint. This is Amsterdam white mixed with water. I don't recall the exact ratio I, I used. This is something that I use with my, um, when I do paint pouring but I wanted to give a good coat of paint all over the canvas. I'm just kind of using it with a little palette knife there um, to get it spread over the surface so that I've got it, well, I was hoping it was gonna be a nice even coat. Um, I actually ended up coming through with a large paintbrush to smooth it out. I was thinking I probably should have just done that in the first place because I've never used a palette knife before and clearly I am not talented <laughs> with that tool as of just yet. 
but um, once I had that all smoothed out, I was ready to go ahead with my decal. I am going to be putting this down on wet paint this time. My thought was, on, in my experience, these decals do not adhere well to canvas. So I thought at least I wanted to have paint on the canvas for it to adhere to. And I also figured if I applied it to the wet paint and I was careful with it, it would give me a little bit of um, grace as far as being able to move it around to where I needed it if I didn't quite have it centered. And the paint would also serve as um, an additional adhesive element, so to speak, right? So the, the paint is going to dry and it's going to be in the, the paint as that paint dries, so it will be more secure. That was my line of thought, at least. So I'm applying the rest of the decals, making sure everything is nice and centered to the best of my ability, um, left to right, as well as top to bottom. I realized that um, that possible was a little bit smaller than the rest of the, uh, the pieces. So I dropped the um, little Bible reference a little bit lower on the page to just make sure it was all even. And then I realized I forgot to turn my camera back on. So when I did all of the paint pouring around the edges. So I'm going to do a little bonus canvas here in a second to show you exactly what I did. But I mixed up a bunch of my paints. I did two shades of purple, um, the white, and then a silver. You can see some of my <laughs> Arteza um, acrylic paint there in that tube laying there. But I am just putting in some of my giant push pins here to serve as little risers for this. I'm making sure that it's nice and level for my paint when I pour it on here. Um, and then I'm going to start out with white. I did run out of my Amsterdam white, so I ended up having to mix a little bit more. <clears throat> but that was neither here nor there. I've got a good amount of it there that I'm going to just blow out with my hair dryer, trying to spread it around the surface. I was thinking I probably should have done this with that first um, painting, but or when I put the white down on the original. But uh, I didn't quite have enough in my bottle, I don't think. So doing my best with what I have left, and I'm just going to go ahead and move on to what's left of my um, other mixed paints. So I have. Um, this one is a purple mixed with thalo blue and um, I think it's apple red, red apple, I think is what the name of the color is. I wanted a deeper royal purple and so that was why I mixed the purples, um, the purple with the red and the blue. Then the other is pearlized lilac and then I had just a few drops left of the silver. Um, that I layered in there. And amazingly, that silver really came through in the end design, even though I had such a small bit of it. I was amazed. So now you see that white that I did around the edge of the canvas? That is essentially what I did with the other piece that I forgot to show you. I put it all around the edge of the canvas and then I layered it with the various colors in that same manner, one right on top of the other, and then I blew those out. But I'm going to show you with these all poured in the middle of my canvas what I did with the blow dryer. I, there you go. And I just blew it. And I, sorry about having the cord right smack in the middle of the, the camera angle. I wasn't paying enough attention to what I was doing, clearly. Um, but when I blew it out with the hair dryer, I just made sure that I blew everything away from the words that were in the center of my piece, just so that I wouldn't cover up anything with the purple paint. Purple is Rich's favorite color, and so I had actually designed that with him in mind. And um, I'm really excited to give that to him because I think it's uh, going to be meaningful to him. And I think he'll know as soon as he sees it that I intended it for him with the, the deep royal purple color. So that is it for this little piece. Just made sure the corners were good to go. And let me know what you think.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the projects, please remember to give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know which one was your favorite. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.